You guys, now that One Piece is a certified hit on Netflix, you can't throw a rock without hitting someone who just won't shut up about it. So now is the perfect time to look back at stretchy powers. Of course, there's Luffy from One Piece, Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, Elastigirl from The Incredibles, Elongated Man, Kamala Khan, Dalsim, Groot, and so much more we'll get into today. In this video, let's get to know these characters a little better and find out why stretchy powers look so fun on screen. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. First, we can't really start talking about stretch powers without mentioning Stretch Armstrong. Introducing Super Stretchy Superhero Stretch Armstrong. Mine's been sitting in a box for years, the gel leaking out, looking all gross. I just pretend it doesn't exist. But at the height of its popularity, every little boy wanted to get their hands on the iconic toy, stretching him from 15 inches all the way up to 5 feet long. They made a ninja version, a scuba version, and even introduced his trusty dog sidekick, Fetch Armstrong. Decades later, appearing in all sorts of popular media. He'll never pull me apart. I'm Stretch F***ing Armstrong. Whoa, 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 hey guys, come on. The iconic toy is still being sold, even cross-promoting to sell Hondas. Uh, but back in 2013, Stretch made a fun little cameo in the secret life of Walter Mitty. <laughs> this movie was just so weird. And in the early days of DC, a lesser-known hero named Plastic Man was introduced. With a first appearance dating back to 1941, Patrick O'Brien is doused with chemicals that turn his body into rubber, which allows him to stretch, bounce, and mold himself into anything he can imagine. With almost no limit to what he can do to his molecular structure, he can stretch as far as a skyscraper, turn his finger into a key, and even change his appearance. In many ways, Plastic Man is the most versatile superhero out there. Sled! Now! <laughs> Huh? <laughs> In 1991, Capcom Street Fighter II brought us Dalsin, a mystical monk that has been teaching yoga for two years. Two years, yoga master. It's hard to get up early in the morning, plus you know how it is with work. And then my yoga teacher got a job in Connecticut. Sure, he could teleport and shoot fireballs, but we all chose Dalsim for his stretch powers. And did I mention he's a monk? In 1995, we were told the tale of a rebellious young girl and a love-struck ghost called Casper and his trio of evil uncles introduced Stinky, who smelled really bad, Fatso, who was just fat, I guess, and Stretch, the ringleader of the group. It was almost like licensed to be the class clown, where all the other kids had to follow the rules, but these three guys, okay, it's our turn, do whatever you want. Yes again, bone bag! <laughs> <laughs> For most scenes, they used maquettes on set for correct eyelines and lighting reference, and after they got the footage of the actors performing to nothing, an animator off to the side would draw over it in real time. These animatics helped the team know exactly what the imaginary ghosts would end up doing. I love the smell of fleshies in the morning! While filming took six months, they then spent another year working with the visual effects studio ILM to bring the characters from 2D to 3D. For each of the ghosts, we had to create a neutral facial expression, and then from those facial expressions, create a variety of expressions and phonetic mouth shapes. I still consider Casper, the movie, the best thing that I have ever done. For the time, this entire process was revolutionary, and the end result became an instant classic with kids everywhere. And who could forget the animated shenanigans from 1996's Space Jam with seconds left on the clock and the Monstars pulling him down? Michael Jordan uses cartoon physics for the game-winning move. Already known for his famous slam dunks, 
the team used a combination of hand-drawn animation and revolutionary post-production methods to exaggerate his surreal, tie-breaking moment. Our job is to make the whole thing as seamless as possible so that an audience looks at it and believes that these characters, whether animated or live, coexist in this environment. Michael Jordan not only saves the Toon world, but adds another memorable moment to the long list of stretch scenes. And elsewhere in the universe, the sequel to MIB gave us Johnny Knoxville's Scrad, who had a second, smaller head named Charlie coming out of his backpack. Okay, fine. Including this one might be a bit of a stretch, but I thought it was fun. After making a scaled-down version of the head on a super long neck, legendary special effects makeup artist Rick Baker explains why that idea wouldn't have worked. It's gonna be you know, the same face in a puppet head in the same shot, and it's never going to look as good as the real face. I said, I think it'd be much better to actually composite his head onto a, like a CG neck, and it's real actor giving a real performance. To do this, they had to film Johnny Knoxville first, then his head separately on a blue screen, and connect the two with a CG neck. But then they had another problem. Having just a super long neck kind of made it look like, uh, <clears throat> penis. So they decided to zip it up in a sleeve, and that made it way less distracting. And while we're still in the world of MIB, the third movie found Will Smith's character Jay jumping off the Chrysler building in order to go back in time. And when he almost reaches the ground, this happens. That counts, right? And now we get to 2004's The Incredibles. In her civilian identity, Helen Parr is a loving wife and a caring mother. But when she dons the mask, she turns into Elastigirl with the power to stretch her body and take any form imaginable. She and the kids find themselves on a secret island and she single-handedly infiltrates Syndrome's lair. The magicians at Pixar had to come up with an entirely new character rig in order to show off her elastic abilities. To make it a little bit harder, not only does she have to get flattened like that, but she has to do some acting when she's up against the wall, see so her hair and her eyes moving around. The animators essentially distort space, kind of like a wormhole. You must be Mrs. <laughs> The sequel puts Elastigirl in the spotlight during the grand opening of a new hover train. The system malfunctions, and Elastigirl gives chase. Starting with storyboards, then moving on to previs, working out where every building and car would go and how the camera would move between them. The animators pushed Elastigirl to her limit, trying out countless new ideas in her elasticity repertoire. After simulating her hair and cloth, adding in effects like smoke, sparks, and explosions, the final sequence showed truly innovative uses of stretch powers later in the movie. When Screenslaver hypnotizes an entire TV station, Elastigirl shows that even without her break-apart bike, she can still manage to catch up to the villain. In Pixar's pantheon of iconic characters, Elastigirl stands apart, using her stretch powers to balance motherhood and her superhero calling. A year later in 2005, hidden up in the clouds is the superhero school, Sky High. With students possessing all sorts of powers and abilities, one of the resident bullies is Lash. Your attention, please! We'd be happy to collect that $15 new student fee. Welcome to Sky High! When it's time for a game called Save the Citizen, Lash and his cohort Speed go up against Stronghold and War and Peace. And for an early 2000s kids movie, Lash pretty much got the ending we all expected. Sucks for you. Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, gained stretch and elastic abilities after being exposed to cosmic rays. The accident sort of accentuates each of their sort of characteristics. Reed Richards has the ability to change his body into any form that he can imagine. In an interview, Stan Lee has said, and I quote, I like Plastic Man. That's a great power, and nobody's using it, so I gave Reed Richards Plastic Man's power. Ah, bless him. 
at least he's honest. Known in the Marvel Universe as the smartest man alive, he's an expert in almost everything. But what really sets him apart is his ability to stretch, deform, and reform at will. From simple actions like shaving, texting, getting toilet paper, or putting his briefcase away, to more heroic actions. And in the final battle with Dr. Doom, we get a better display of what his powers can really do. In the sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, we see the powers of all four members combine to give us this sequence. It's clobbering time. <gasps> For the early 2000s, you gotta give them props for trying so many fun ideas with the iconic group. The darker interpretation for the 2015 version wasn't received as well, but whenever we saw stretchy powers, it looked convincing enough. When Reed wakes up after the accident, the team made these long tubes to get a sense of what his stretched out limbs would look like on set. He would talk to me over a microphone on what my hand was doing. He's like, now your hand starts to go through the brackets and I feel around, look around. He's splayed out and retracting in. It looks painful with bones breaking or muscles moving. Meanwhile, in another universe, we're introduced to yet another variant of Mr. Fantastic. I'm the smartest man alive, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Okay, applause break? A go. Hello, Steven. After years of speculation and wishful thinking, fans around the world went crazy when they saw John Krasinski in the role. So when it came time for the Illuminati to battle Wanda, expectations were through the roof. Ah, that's it. But luckily in the same year, the Marvel slop kept flowing with the introduction of Kamala Khan. With the combination of a mystical bangle and her dormant inhuman genes, she shows off her elastic and embiggening abilities. To get the VFX heavy shots, they created Kamala's entirely digital double, which allowed her to perform some of the more gravity-defying stunts and fight off an entire army of damage control agents in the final battle. While the show had her creating these projections out of hard light, in other media, she was known to enlarge herself without it. <laughs> Having to keep her larger-than-life power a secret was a metaphor for how it must have felt being a teenage female person of color growing up in Joyzee, trying to fit in with everyone else. It didn't help when she eventually realized she could grow much taller than she ever thought possible. Well, there goes the Golden Gate Bridge. Thanks, Kamala. Being a relative newcomer to the superhero scene, Miss Marvel did a great job showing off her wild new powers. And before we leave the MCU, let's check in with the Guardians of the Galaxy. More specifically, Groot. It only made sense that an alien, sentient, tree-like creature could grow his arms and legs for any occasion. Like grabbing a Cornix battery, becoming a ladder, protecting his friends, getting revenge, forming Stormbreaker, killing bad guys, and going full kaiju. No, not kaiju <laughs> Throughout the Guardians trilogy, you can't even begin to imagine the amount of work the team put in. From creating entire worlds from the ground up, to fabricating hundreds of digital creatures, to even the simplest things like eye replacements. Ah! When we first introduced them in the first film, they were such weird characters that nobody was really expecting. While creating Rocket might have just been a little bit more difficult, figuring out his skeletal and muscle structure, placing every strand of fur, and working out every twitch of his eye, Groot was also a challenge. Even though he's a tree, 
a lot of work still went in to creating believable motion and a super wide range of facial animations. Remind you of anything? But all the hard work from the prop artists to the set designers, the filming crew to the visual effects team can only take the character so far. To truly bring him to life, you had to get Vin Diesel. And Vin came in and he says five words in the movie. I am and then he got a million dollars. And now, let's meet the elongated man. First appearing in The Flash in 1960, Ralph Dibney gets his powers from drinking a soda, which lets him stretch to superhuman lengths. He can stretch as far as a skyscraper, turn his finger into a key, and even change his appe- Wait a second. I said this already. Ah well, there's only so many ways I can recycle the same information. In 2017, he made his live action debut on CW's The Flash. Ralph is capable of stretching his body and contorting it in these kind of really weird ways and also these really long distances too. The showrunner Eric Wallace explained some of the main influences on how they approached the visual effects. The elongated man's powers are crazy. Just from a visual point of view, it's like looking at a Warner Brothers cartoon. It's Bugs Bunny, it's Daffy Duck, the way he stretches. Oh, is that my face? Knowing this, it makes sense why he's mainly used for comedic effect. Aside from the expected uses of his powers, like saving people in harm's way, stealing top secret information, or getting rid of bombs, he also uses them in a few other fun ways. Becoming a safety cushion, blocking bullets with his hand, and becoming a giant umbrella. Having arms that can stretch for miles also lets him do this. Spider-Man 2 nod, I see you. At times, he's almost a little too overpowered. When being stepped on and stabbed with ninja stars can no longer hurt you, you pretty much have nothing to be afraid of. But while everyone else is focusing on all the crazy things he can do, I'm just looking at his tiny suit. That is adorable. On another, way more raunchy superhero show, The Boys gave us Ezekiel. A look behind the scenes shows a full CG arm replacement, complete with tiny arm hairs. I swear, these visual effects artists deserve way more recognition. When the boys infiltrate Ezekiel's event, Huey tries to extort him for information on Compound V. You played my butt like jazz, with poise and skill and willingness to improvise. But Ezekiel gets angry. <laughs> A stand-in chokes Huey while the VFX artists blend his hand with Ezekiel's arm. After removing him, we get a pretty badass moment. Aw, that sounds so gross. The very next year, the creator of Spy Kids brought us We Can Be Heroes. When alien invaders capture Earth's greatest champions, oh dip, Pedro's in this? It's down to their kids to step up. You got twins who can rewind and fast forward time, a kid who can morph his face, and young Princess Leia who can control water. But the one with stretch abilities is a boy called Noodles. To get this shot, the kids started the action, and a stand-in shot separately smashes the table in half. They connected the two elements with a CG fist, and the rest is history. When it comes time for Noodles to start grabbing people, the director explains how they did it. When Noodles whips his arm around the guard, it's all about just physical acting, so I just work with him on pretending his arm is long and extending it a certain way, and then when we extend it with visual effects, it looks like he really wrapped his arm around the guy. Stretched out arms and giant hands take a mixture of careful planning, creative CGI, and the fearlessness to try things that haven't been done before. It's what makes the recent breakout hit One Piece work so well. What started out as an adventure, fantasy, Japanese manga series back in 1997 became a juggernaut franchise and beloved the world over. When the live-action show finally debuted, we saw the care and attention they put into the sets, the prosthetics, the fight choreography, and the visual effects. Out of the many quirky characters in the sprawling story, the main draw is Monkey D. Luffy. After eating a gum gum fruit, he gains the power of elasticity. Luffy being this happy-go-lucky character, using his stretchy ability to protect himself or his friends, kind of opens up a world where the whole thing's your playpen. Everyone gave it their all when crafting the action scenes, injecting fun wherever they could and you could tell that the actor for Luffy was having a blast the entire time. A closer look at the fight between Luffy and Kuro shows how stunt work 
translates to the final sequence. It's a fun game seeing how One Piece got inspiration from other stretch moments over the years. But it's even more fun to see how the live action lines up with the anime. that the creative team behind the show has finally cracked the code and delivered a live-action anime that's not only true to the source material, but builds upon it in truly meaningful ways. I just wanted to show that again. It's like my favorite part of the whole show. So at the end of this video, I hope you've gotten a better understanding of the handful of stretchy characters over the years. From the household names to the more obscure moments that we all forgot, One Piece becoming a worldwide phenomenon has definitely put the stretch power back in the spotlight. And I can't wait to see what else they'll do with it in season two. Anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble. Hey, subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.